What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name is Chris. I'm going to be your host for today. Now, we opened this on our live stream for our 3,000 subscriber celebration, but you know we had to do a real review on this. Price, taste, drinkability, everybody knows before we get started. Time for the traditional, time for the traditional sip. Cheers, y'all. I haven't been drinking yet, I promise. So we're going to keep this short and sweet for you today. If you've already seen my review on the 3000 subscriber celebration, we did compare this to Russell's Reserve single barrel as well as Kentucky Spirit in a blind. It came in last place, but it was the neck pour and I had already been drinking a little bit that night. We're going to put it through the gauntlet tonight though. Price, taste, drinkability. Everybody knows we start with drinkability. How well does the ethanol kick compare to the proof on this? So if you do or do not know, Russell's Reserve is provided to us by Wild Turkey, coming in with the greatest mash bill of all time at 75% corn, 13% rye, 12% malted barley. This is advertised as 13 years old, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that during the bourbon bomb of the week. We do know this is 114.8 proof. That's close to cash strength for Russell's Reserve. We've talked about that in the past. Wild Turkey actually barrels their stuff between the 105 and 115 proof mark. So at 114.8, it's pretty damn close. We do have the rare breed coming in at 116.8. So that's just a little bit higher. But for this bottle right here, drinkability at 114.8. Let's take another sip and find out. I'll tell you what, the first time I drank this, I was very worried about drinkability on this bottle. It wasn't that good. It was the neck pour. It didn't have any time to open up. Since then, it's done exactly that. It's opened up. It's aerated out very nicely. Sitting in this glass, even, it seems like it's easier to drink. Bringing it to the nose, you don't get those ethanol flavors right off the top there. I will give this a pretty good score at 115 proof. Let's give this like an 8.72 when it comes to drinkability on this bottle. I don't think it's quite in the nines because there are some bottles out there with higher proofs that drink a little bit easier, but 8.72 seems like a fair spot. Let's get into price. Well, no, taste. Let's do taste. Actually, you know what? I'm going to skip that altogether. We're going to get into this week's bourbon bomb of the week before we get into taste on this because that's going to be very important when it comes to the actual flavor profiles on this. So let's send it over to this week's bourbon bomb of the week and learn a little bit more about this particular Russell's Reserve 13 that I'm sipping on. Cheers. So for this week's Bourbon Bomb of the Week, we're going to dive deep into something that I would have never known about if I didn't have my Discord and some friends to inform me on this. Very lightly etched in on the back of all of these bottles, you can see where I'm looking. So the label ends and it's on the back left corner here. You can see some letters and some numbers. And if you hold it in the right lighting at the right angle, you can see LL slash KE. And that's basically telling me that this is the third batch of Russell's Reserve 13 that they put on the market. You have LL slash JD for batch number one, as well as LL slash JL for batch number two. And I know what you're thinking, Chris, does that really make a big difference? Well, with the information that we have between the different batches here, it absolutely does when it comes to the flavor profile on this. This is 41 barrels from 2002, which is 20 year old whiskey, 17 barrels from 2004, which is 18 year old whiskey. The rest of this is blended from 2007 and 2008, which is 15 and 14 year old whiskey respectfully. So while this might say Russell's Reserve 13 year on it, it's actually some older whiskey in that and that's going to affect the flavor profile tremendously. Compare that to something like batch one, which is LL slash JD at 135 barrels of 13 year old whiskey and then 35 barrels of 19 year old whiskey. You're getting a lot more of that 13 year old age statement on that one compared to the 20 year old age statement, the 18 year old age statement and the 14 and 15 year that you're getting out of this particular Russell's Reserve 13. Now, batch number two, which was their smallest batch of LL slash JL is very similar, apparently, to batch number one, although don't quote me on that. But it's just very interesting to see that although they call this Russell's Reserve 13 year, this may be a lot older than you think. That being our bourbon bomb of the week, let me send it back over to our tasting profile on this and see what we're going to give this first score on taste. Cheers, y'all. The other thing I forgot to mention during our bourbon bomb of the week is this is actually Camp Nelson whiskey. Now, Camp Nelson is one of three different sites on Wild Turkey's premises. It's usually highly regarded as some of their best stuff. Camp Nelson Warehouse C is going to be the single rickhouse that they put out. They actually removed Warehouse C. This is Warehouse A, D, and E. So if you care about that at all, that's an interesting fact as well. So when I first opened this up during my live and I tried it, I thought this seems like a lot older than 13 year old whiskey. And then I come to find out it actually is. This is 20, 18, 15, 14 year old whiskey like we talked about during the bourbon bomb of the week. And I won't say that it's bad. It's just not my favorite flavor profile. I think it's one of the better flavor profiles when it comes to that age, that 20, 15, 16 year old stuff. Because usually once I get out of that 10 to 12 year range, I start to not like it so much. But this still 
kind of gives you those hints of wild turkey, those Russell's Reserve flavors that you truly love. Then it just adds a lot of aged flavors to that. So you're still getting that caramel, that sweetness, that oak on this is very dominant. Then you're getting a lot of those tannins, those flavors that you're gonna get from 13, 20, 15 years in the barrel. So again, it's not the worst, but I think I would like something a little bit more toned down, a little bit more of that batch one than I do on this batch three. So by no means does that make this a bad bottle. Again, just because my flavor profile doesn't align with what they put in this bottle, I'm no judge to say what you should or should not like. I'm just telling you the flavors that I get and they're not my favorite. I'm not gonna give this a bad score though. There are whiskeys out there that taste bad, that truly don't taste good, not well blended, not well rounded. That's not what's going on here. Wild Turkey obviously knows what they're doing. Jimmy and Eddie Russell are amazing at what they do and there's a reason that they've been around this long. So for the taste, I'm gonna give this a pretty good score still. Again, I'm gonna drop it a little bit lower just because it's not my favorite personally, but I'm gonna put it like an 8.52 when it comes to taste on this. And last but certainly not least, we're gonna get a price on this and this bottle comes in at $99 plus tax here in Pennsylvania comes up to 105. Do I think that's a terrible price? No, but I also think Rare Breed at a higher proof and similar taste profile, maybe not the years behind it, you're talking 13 years compared to something that's probably like seven to 10 years old, as well as Russell's Reserve Single Barrel, which again, I like the flavor profile better, but probably doesn't have the age behind it. Does that three years really warrant another $40, $50 jump compared to what you could get the Russell's Reserve 10 year for? I don't know. It's obviously a limited release. That seems to be the way a lot of these companies are going right now. Hey, you got to get it. We're only going to put out 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 bottles. If you miss out, this is the only opportunity you're going to have to get it. It's supply and demand, and I understand that. But at the end of the day, $100 just seems a bit high for me, but I'm not going to knock it for them anyway. Let's give them like a, we'll keep it right in that high eights, like an 8.62 when it comes to price on this. So listen, I obviously made this easy on myself. 8.52, 8.62, and 8.72 is going to average out to, you guessed it, 8.62. This bottle, for me, I thought was gonna be a 2022 Whiskey of the Year candidate. It doesn't seem like it's gonna shake out that way. We'll obviously put it in the blind and see how it does at the end of the year, but I do think that it's gonna fall short compared to other bottles that we've already had and some bottles that we are waiting on right now. But listen, if you don't mind, click that like and that subscribe button if you haven't already. Please check me out on Instagram, at Bourbon of the Week, go click that follow button over there. If you wanna help support the channel out financially, check us out on Patreon, that link in the description below. Come chat with us 24 seven on Discord, that link in the description below as well. Please don't drink and drive, always drink responsibly and stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers y'all. Told you we keep it short.